everybody, this is Nico from F4BB.com and we're here with Gary Clausen, the genius who made BBM that we all love. Gary, how are you doing today? I'm very good. Awesome. So I'm thrilled to, to be here. Everything's done. I'm relaxed. It's awesome. Perfect. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what your day-to-day -day operations are? My day-to-day -day operations? Yeah. My title is Principal Architect. Uh, the last I've been aware of for 12 years now. <coughs> Responsibility. My primary opportunity has been to work with teams, actually all over the company, to be able to look at, work on a lot of things that are really important to us, including responsiveness, performance, uh, and a lot of the BlackBerry DNA that's important to us and to the users, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. As, as a person who built BBM, right, how do you feel about the BBM you see in uh, the BlackBerry 10? Uh, did I ever envision it going that far? I tell you, when we first did BlackBerry Messenger, BlackBerry Messenger was something we wrote very much for ourselves. It was some, We were experimenting with IAM at the time, a bunch of different ones at the same time. And Black, for any one of those, anyone that we were working on, yeah, we had to play by the rules that were established by the desktop platforms. But BlackBerry Messenger was our opportunity to play with what worked and what worked up really well. And what's amazing to me is even at the time we had grand plans for what my professor was doing, what worked was, was I was sorry, what was simplest and most effective. And I'm actually blown away with how successful it's been. But at the same time, when we built it, we knew that if it was popular, if it was possible to be able to have a BlackBerry only mobile community, that was going I always thought it would be amazing what, what, what could come of that. And when I think about to, uh, like, how it's happened and the features that have gone in, there's still a whole lot more that I think is capable. I think it's amazing how far these devices have come, what's possible right now. But what's even more amazing is the things that are going to be possible going forward. From being from the start to where we are today, is there anything, anything else that you personally would like to see on BBM? Maybe it doesn't have to be a feature that's coming or something like you envision for the future. For the future, right? Actually, there's lots of things that I think that that, that I thought about going into BlackBerry Messenger. Um, what's amazing to me is still the simplest and most effective things. BlackBerry, if BlackBerry Messenger is successful because it works, um, and it's about communication, it's about establishing relationships, being able to talk to people, and that comes first and foremost. So while I think there's lots of stuff right now, I actually am thrilled with what we'll be able to do with it going forward. I'm also, I, I think it's amazing how like a lot of times the features that a lot of times people think are very going to be very pop, successful sometimes aren't. Um, dancing avatars, uh, changing the color of your home screen. A lot of times the things that people feel are going to be successful and instant messaging often aren't. Because at the end of the day, what matters most on mobile is simply being able to quickly and effectively and reliably communicate with people. On mobile, more than anywhere else, it's about let me get the message across with clarity and certainty and know that it got there. So I can, so I, I don't have to think about the actual, I don't think about BBM. I'm thinking about who I'm communicating with. What would you say is uh, your personal favorite feature of BBM? My personal favorite right, feature? Right, to where you, you were like, wow, that, whether you invented it or not, you're just like, wow, that's, that's the best thing of B, about BBM. You know, I, actually, there's a few. Actually, there's a few. The things that are that I love, the things that are most amazing, the things that when you look back at them, they're really subtle details, but they are incredibly important when it comes to mobile. Uh, one of the things that people used to, used to talk about with instant messaging translating into mobile, the important thing is people want to know how they're being viewed on the mobile networks. So, if people felt like I was online. Um, on, an, on Yahoo Messenger, but I wasn't actually on online, I created a lot of stress. So, just simply the ability, the D's and R's, the ability to be able to send a message to somebody, and because I know it's getting to their BlackBerry and not, there's no, the expectation is 
that it's a mobile conversation. So there's an understanding that I'm mobile, and I can tell, I can tell when somebody when the message is delivered, and I can also tell when it's read. Um, there used to be a feature in BlackBerry Messenger that I loved. That it's not there overtly in the API, but D's and R's give you the ability to be able to. We used to call it set alert, but we, what we used to call it was set ambush. Because you, there's these cases where somebody's on a plane or they're busy or anything else, and you can't tell whether or not they're there or not. So you send the message and you get the delivery. Uh, and then you can lie and wait. And you can wait until that user is actually online, and you'll see instantly when they read that message, and you know that you've got them. <laughs> um, and I know that people play around this too by, by not, they're, they're conscious before they've actually read a message. I gotta say, D's and R's, it, it's a simple, basic platform thing, but it's one of my favorites. Um, and one thing that we fought hard to keep in there, too, because there's any time, like, red receipts in any sort of messaging environment has often been, it erodes over time because people, people say, well, it's a denial of my privacy, so it should be optional. Right? And uh, occasionally, a lot of messaging platforms have made it optional. But we realized early that if we made it optional, uh, it erodes the meaning of it. So if I ever, if I ever don't get a read receipt, but I can tell that you've read my message, my confidence in that is gone. Um, but the D's and R's are not optional, and they they build in mobile presence in a very natural way. That's one of the things. <laughs> yeah. So from your current job as a chief architect. Do you help teams get together? Like, do you oversee, for example, the team with keyboard needed to speak to the team with the hardware and stuff like that? Do Do you actually oversee that type of situation? Yeah, actually, very much. Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, the responsiveness, right? How right. fast BlackBerry then ends. And when you think of all the complexity that has to go on, simply when you open up an email, you might not realize it, but that's running a separate process. But the keyboard, the keyboard cascades, the rendering engine, uh, the UIB code, uh, all of those things have to work in concert and have to work extremely well. So uh, teams will generally do the best job they possibly can, but to get that end-to-end -end experience, every one of those teams have to work in concert and extremely well in order to be able to get the job done. So, Quite literally, I've spent a lot of time the last little while. Actually, it's been an epic experience. So we'll be in a room in, somewhere, and we'll be communicating with teams literally across the planet, right? yeah. from Sweden, Sweden, Boston, Waterloo, Ottawa, everywhere, and uh, Redwood City, and even testing. So we'll be actually so we'll be working in a room. We'll be doing diagno diagnostics with teams from WebKit to Cascades, and be on the phone with, some, with an expert from Cunix. We'll be live debugging across the system with all these teams in concert and problem solving, and uh, and the workers are going around around the clock. So we'll start we'll start an issue, be working on it in Sweden, and then uh, they'll pick that up in California. Um, it's very good. It's epic. <laughs> it's actually it's been awesome. World class people. Uh, yeah, the, you see a lot of people actually. Uh, that worked on the phones and the new operating system and everything. Yeah. Is there any message you have for them, especially seeing that the phones are almost sold out everywhere now? In the two markets that are that are be selling, uh, last report said that car house is sold out in UK, if I'm not mistaken. In Canada, Bell oh. just announced that it's the hottest, the fastest selling smartphone release ever. I tell you, I, I was uh, unable to sleep when the plane went over. Jet lag. <laughs> I was there trying to sleep, and I was struck with something that I thought uh, was absolutely amazing. So for the past year, we've been talking, and I've been speaking at these conferences, and we've been talking about the promise of BlackBerry 10, um, and what it will be able to do, um, and some of the demos of what is coming. What's absolutely epic to me is that now it's past tense. We, after the launch last week, a colleague said to mine, he said, we should start tweeting BB10 delivered because it's past tense. And I thought, you know, a lot of the work the past year has been solving problems we've solved before on a new, better platform. 
and a lot of the things that we've been talking about, even a lot of things I've been talking to you about, I dream plans and dreams for things we could do with Blackberry Messenger or with email or with that platform um, are now back in scope again. We've delivered on a platform. We have it there. And now it's the beginning of being able to bring all a whole new a lot of things come back into play. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you coming. We're going to let you give a shout out to all our fans who absolutely love you, being the BBM founder. Yeah. And then we'll, until we catch up the next time. So. Thank you very much. You, you got to give a shout out. What's a shout out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. Thank you so Thank much, you. man.